Hey, welcome back in to another session of Small Group Leader Development Course. Uh, I'm Rick McClatchy again, so glad that you have returned for another session. Today we're going to talk about you the leader. Before we really get talking about what it means to lead a group, what the process looks like, tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff, we want to first and foremost, we want to spend some time talking about you. What are the components that you need to have in order for you to be an effective leader? So we can start with ourselves, start with our own hearts. It's going to set us up to be in a very strong position in regards to how we want to lead a group to have impact on other people. And I think inevitably then impact the world around us. And so, so we're going to jump into this whole concept as we've We've talked about the why, we've talked about reasons why you should be excited to step into being a group leader, the value of it. And so now we're gonna get into a little bit more nitty gritty. We're gonna actually talk about where the rubber meets the road in regards to leading a group. So let's talk about you, the leader. There's a lot of misconceptions, you know, honestly, about the concept of being a leader. Sometimes the word leader actually freaks people out and they, they're like, no, I, I can't have any of this. No, no, thank you. But I think really leadership is simple. John Maxwell has uh, been famously known for saying leadership is influence. And when you boil it down like that, it kind of demystifies a little bit this process or this idea of leadership that it's not, you know, this scientific thing. It it's the ability for one person to influence another person or a group of people in a particular direction. And honestly, if we're convicted, if we're convinced that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, obviously we want to influence people to follow him. We want to influence people to be more successful in their lives, whether it's handling their finances better, whether it's being more successful in their marriages, whether it's being more uh, involved, more released into their gifts and their talents and their abilities. Of course we would want that. Of course we would want to be able to influence people in this direction. So as when we think about leadership in that regard, I think all of us have an element that we can, we can take a bite of that and we can, we can go down that journey. And so the first thing is one leadership is is influence. It's it's nothing more, it's nothing less. And 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 honestly, influence is significant. So it's not something to be minimized, but it's also something that's learnable. It's also something that is you can grow in. It's not something that you're just born into. So I think for the most part leaders are made, not born. And so that's good news for me, for sure, because I'm not so sure I was born into it being a leader. But I know over time, I've really grown in my ability to help people grow, to influence people in a particular direction. Leaders don't know everything and leaders don't do everything, but leaders go first. That's something I really want you to really take into your heart today. Leaders don't know everything and they don't do everything, but they do go first. And so I want to talk about today really following Jesus first, that you, the leader, focus your heart and your attention on this idea of following Jesus, but following Jesus first, setting the tone for your group, because who you are will have a greater impact on what happens in your group than what you say. Because people ultimately uh, mimic or model what you do uh, much, much more than what you say. I mean, I try it all the time with my kids. Hey, do as I say and not as I do. Hey, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I don't have this all dialed in, but I can tell you the exact answer. And so it's much more important that we as leaders choose to work on our own hearts and get ourselves pointed in the right direction, headed towards Jesus, following him. So the first characteristic that in following Jesus, one would be humility. James chapter four and verse six, it says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Man, I tell you what, when it comes to the God of the universe, I don't want him actively opposed to me. So I definitely want to sign myself up for growing 
in humility for sure. And, and the way I describe humility really is a proper view of God. And by that, I mean, man, a proper view of who he is, big, exalted, holy, righteous, king of the universe, also our heavenly father. So having a proper view of who God is positionally, that we know that he's so much greater than we are, that so much higher, so much, so far above. And then secondly, to kind of couple up with that is a proper view of yourself. I say so many times, I say, the, the biggest problem in this situation is you have too low a view of God and too high a view of yourself. And because you have too high a view of yourself and too low a view of God, you have then too low a view of what God has done for you. You're not amazed by it. You're not thankful for it. You're not any of that kind of stuff because you feel like the, um, the chasm that Jesus has bridged for you is one that you could have hopped over like a little boy hopping over a mud puddle which that couldn't be further from the truth. It's much more like a Grand Canyon type of a chasm, one that you couldn't, even if you're evil Knievel, you know, you can't make a jump across the Grand Canyon. It's not going to be done. It, you need supernatural intervention, which thankfully that's what we got. We got supernatural intervention. So, so humility, a proper view of God, a proper view of yourself leading to then a proper understanding of the cross. And I think the reason why humility is the, is the place I'm starting when it comes to leading a group is I know from personal experience, I can look back on a time in my life, I say before I really grown in any real amount of understanding of humility, is I had a little bit of a self-righteousness problem, a little bit of a thing where I wasn't so sure that God could help that person or reach that person but I sure did understand why God picked me to be on his team. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did not question why God picked me to be part of his family. And that really ends up just being a bit of what you might call a toxic uh, attitude, a toxic idea in order in the way that you then relate to people, treat people. And so humility, proper view of God, proper view of yourself and a proper understanding of the cross. What's one area that you can see in your life where you have grown in your in the area of humility? And then and then maybe what's an area of your life where you think, "Wow, I definitely have some room to grow there." Now, secondly, let's talk about prayer. And prayer is super important in regards to following Jesus because it's talking to Jesus, it's relating to him. Time plus words equals intimacy. I mean, like Time and communication is intimacy. It's how you grow in intimacy with another person. It's how we grow in intimacy with God is spending time with him and communicating with him. And so in that, uh, there's a, just a couple of words I want you to think about. One is relational. It's relational. It's not transactional. We don't want to just simply come to God with our list of things that we want, things that we need. We want to come to God to know him and be known by him. One, and then another one is consistency. In order for us to really grow, in order for us to take ground in the realm of relationship with God, we got to be consistent. We got to show up. It's really half the battle. I mean, G.I. Joe said knowing is half the battle. I say showing up is half the battle. Just show up in your prayer life. Show up in the presence of God. Number two, number three, excuse me, number three is conversation. Make, just, just make it a conversation. Now, he is the great high and mighty God of the universe, but he's also called us his friend. He's also adopted us as his kids. So we could talk to him. We can, we can just connect with him. And all of that just being built on number one, humility, giving us reverence for who God is, that fear of God, that, that knowing our position and not not being arrogant and proud as we come into his presence. So that now, what is in your life, what's your biggest hindrance that, that stops you from having a regular prayer life? And, and if you could think about it today, ask yourself today, what's one thing that you could do today to increase the amount of time you spend in prayer? And again, this is not a performance-oriented kind of situation, but 
in order to have quality, you're, you're going to have to have some quantity. <laughs> like we're going to have to get that quantity field up a little bit in order for us to increase the quality field, you know? So <clears throat> what is one thing you can do today to increase the amount of time that you pray? Now, thirdly, let's talk about Bible reading and journaling or, you know, what people a lot of times call, and when you mix it with prayer, call devotion. So they do spending time with God, spending time alone with God, Bible reading and journaling. Uh, one, this is very simple. Just have a plan. I don't, I don't even care. <clears throat> excuse me. I don't even care. I don't even care what the plan is. Just have a plan and then begin to execute the plan. If that's a couple of verses a day, that's a great place to start. If it's five chapters a day, wow, you need a medal. You know, um, we, we just need to have a plan so that we can make progress towards that goal. I think of uh, this picture of Joshua as he was training under Moses and Moses would go into the tent of meeting and he would meet with God. And then as he would leave, it says Joshua would stay at the tent of meeting and just spend time in the presence of God. There's something about us spending time in the presence of God. And one of the key ways to do that is interacting with the word of God. Psalms chapter one talks about blessed is the blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or sits in the seat of the scornful or walks in the path of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of God that he meditates on day and night. And it's that man who will be fruitful in season, that his fruit will not wither, that he will thrive. And so I want you to be that kind of person, one that meditates day and night on the scriptures that takes it in. And one of the ways that really helps do that is a journaling method called the HEAR method, H-E-A-R, like to hear something. The H simply stands for highlight. And that means to come to scripture every time with a sense of expectation that God's going to speak to you. So you're ready to highlight the thing that God kind of makes jump out at you. Uh, no, then the letter E is explain. So explain what that verse means in its context. This is where you do a little bit of homework maybe on um, you know what verses come before, what verses come after, what's the context, who was the author talking to so that you can have a general idea. So you're not just taking some random verse out of the Bible and making it say whatever you want to say and probably it doesn't actually mean that. Like we have, we've all fallen into that trap. Who are we kidding? So, uh, so highlight, explain, and then apply. So now that we know kind of what it means to the original people that received that message, what does that mean when we apply it to our lives in our context? And then respond. And I, I like to say respond in prayer. So when you highlight and you explain and then you apply it to your life, you now have truth intersecting your life at some point and you need to do something about that. And so the first place that we can do that again is in prayer with God to say, okay, God, you've shown me this thing and I want to respond. And so, God, I pray you'd help me today as I learn to uh, love my neighbor better, as I learn to, you know, insert whatever the thing is that God has spoken to your heart through the word of God. And so have a plan. And then uh, just using that method, I think is a really valuable way. And then just thinking of the impact that it had on Joshua as he spent time in the presence of God under the tutelage of Moses. And, and it really was the thing that catapulted him into being the next leader of the nation of Israel after Moses passed away. And so now the last one we're going to talk about today is worship. One, because God is worthy. And two, because it reminds us yet again who we are and where we are and who he is and where he is and how amazing he is. And, and again, I, you know, really ultimately, I think the biggest point here is to remember that, that worship is not about songs. It's not about, you know, uh, Maverick City or Jesus Culture or whatever other, you know, worship, you know, elevation worship. It, now, I, I, I love a lot of that music. Don't get me wrong. But. That's not the encapsulation of worship is not a worship service. Worship is the pretty much the just the aroma that comes from our lives as we live our lives before God. 
And so that's the way you treat your your spouse. It's the way you treat your kids. It's the way you treat your friends. It's the way you interact at the grocery store with people in line. Worship really touches every aspect of our lives. And so um, it's just so key for us to come and to uh, humble ourselves again, kind of coming back to point number one, humility, humbling ourselves, worshiping God for who he is. And, and you know what? It's, you know, God doesn't need to be reminded who he is. God doesn't need to be reminded how amazing he is, but we need to be reminded about who he is. We need to be reminded about who we are and we need to be reminded about how amazing he is so that it stirs us to live lives that, that actually attract people uh, to the gospel. And so there you have it. You've got humility, you've got prayer, you've got Bible reading, you've got worship, um, that journaling method. It's all in there. It's good stuff. So take some time to think through all that. And uh, we're going to join you again in the next session.